Um, I wanted to ask you, going back to in Fuego Henderson, this particular shop, unbeknownst to you, I don't know if I've told you this story in passing or in any of the other conversations that we have, but I, similar to you, said at one point in my life, it was in my early 20s, that I was going to own a cigar shop in Las Vegas. So, 35 now, about 15 years ago, let's say, <laughs> I said I was going to own a cigar shop in Las Vegas, and unlike every cigar shop in Las Vegas that I saw, I wanted that cigar shop to have 24-hour access to it. You are the very, very first person that I have ever spoken to that has a 24-hour access cigar shop. So where I'm going with this is that number one, I wanted to say I'm very jealous of you because you were able to do it way before I was able to do it. Not that, uh, not that more of them should not exist because I thoroughly believe that the beauty of Las Vegas, Nevada is that Las Vegas is a 24-hour city more so than most of the other cities that have Absolutely. existed, right? Um, or that are in existence. But also that, you know, what, what other features of Infuego Henderson specifically and Infuego Las Vegas, both cigar lounges that, that are offered, you know, to the patrons of that cigar lounge that are different than some of the other cigar lounges that exist in this particular city? Because, you know, we have people that come from all over the world. They, like you and, and I, probably go to cigar shops locally in their own town, right? Absolutely, yeah. They go to cigar shops around the world. Whenever they go to a new city, they seek one out. So what is, what is different in your eyes? So it's, it's a great question, and again, I could talk for hours and, and uh, try try not to be so so, so verbose about it. Um, I think the first first and foremost, it, and if you talk to my my partner, my business partner Michael Abdullah, who created in Fuego, you know, about seven eight months before him and I teamed up. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why we teamed up was was other than getting along, like finding your long lost brother. Um, we both had the same exact vision, right? So we wanted to create a place where people could come and be themselves. Mm -hmm. It was very important to us. Like we both used the same exact example of when we were in elementary school and it was, it was playtime and you go out in the playground. Nobody cared how much money you had. Nobody sure. cared what your dad did, what car you drove you know, what clothes you were wearing. We all went out and we played. Yeah, we were ourselves and we had gotten the occasional tussle and fight, but most of the time we were having a great time, right? Mm -hmm. And with all the experience that both he and I had had being consumers of cigars and being patrons of cigar shops and cigar lounges, in my case, all over the world, he was here in Las Vegas, but my experience came from cities all over the world, not just the United States, but outside of the United States too. Yeah. We wanted to create a place where the customer could come and be themselves, relax, and enjoy a cigar. That was our mission. Mm -hmm. um, we've stuck to that from day one. We, we, we want to create experiences that customers enjoy and they come back for. The reality of Las Vegas is you don't need us for a cigar. You don't need any of the shops that are in Las Vegas for a cigar. We're we're in one of the toughest states for for, for to, you know for tobacco in terms taxation. of taxation. Um, but also, guess what? Competition. Smoke in any casino, right? There's for any now. patio for now. <laughs> for now. Right? So you don't need our shop or any other shop to have a place to smoke. Right. Everyone's got beautiful back patios, right? Now, you know, it gets a little hot, a little cold most of the year, but still, my, my point is, it's not like some places where, you know, I lived in Edinburgh for a year when I, I was on assignment over there mm -hmm. in 2009, 2010, and there was nowhere in Edinburgh that you could smoke. Really? Edinburgh, Scotland, at that time, there was no indoor spot that you could smoke. The only place that I could smoke cigars was on the golf course. So guess what I did on the weekends? I did three rounds of golf, and I'm not even a golfer. <laughs> because I could smoke cigars. Because you wanted to smoke a cigar. Absolutely. So here in Vegas, you know, I always look at it as my customers come in here, they don't need me for cigars. Uh, they can certainly get cigars cheaper online. Mm -hmm. the, the government hasn't figured that out yet. The state government hasn't figured that out yet. That, out that right. yet. And so why, why would somebody come to Enfuego, 
Henderson or in Fuego Sahara or any of the other shops that are here locally, right? Mm -hmm. They come because of the experience. And so what we try to create is a, a great environment, a great experience for someone to be able to sit and enjoy a cigar. It's the hospitality business. That's what we're in. We're 100%. not in the cigar business. We're in the hospitality business. And anything we can do to make that experience great, we, we do our best to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that you have quite the convivial place that definitely lends to that. And that's a, just the best perspective, in my opinion, to have to it. Because even behind the bar, you know, that's, that's what it was. You were not in the alcohol business. You were in the hospitality business. Right. And, you know, 90%, 95% of the people that I talk to on, on a daily basis are all part of the hospitality business in one way, shape, or form or another. The majority of the subscribers of this show, I feel, you know, at least the, the initial subscribers of the show are involved in hospitality. A lot of them, they want to they wanna learn more about cigars. They want, you know, they want a convivial place to come to and go to, and, and that was... Part of the reason why I asked you to be on here today was just to showcase the fact that you have this this wonderful store, your partner, you guys have two shops in Las Vegas. One of them is super accessible to the Strip off, off of Sahara. Sahara. This yeah. one out in, uh, uh, this is technically considered Henderson. Yeah, this is the right? city of Henderson. This actually. is the city of Henderson. Yeah. So technically- 15 minutes from any Strip casino by right. Uber or taxi, uh, but it, it is a different city the way we have, we have uh, we have three cities and one county. Right, know, depending Clark, on where you live. and then right. the right. cities. The three cities. Um, you know, for, for me, let me tell you, one of the things that makes me so happy is when I get either a text, a phone call, or a lot of times it's a, it's a direct message on Instagram mm -hmm. from somebody who's coming from out of town. Right and wants to come and have a cigar with me, wants to come to the shop and just meet, have a cigar, hang out. Right. Um, we love that. We love that. Michael loves it. I love it. Um, thanks to social media, the power of social media, you know, mm -hmm. we all know, like if I, you know, if I'm ever traveling, if I'm going to a city, I know what the top three, four, five, six places are, depending on what part of that city I'm staying, I know where to go to have a cigar, where they're going to be welcoming, where they, yeah. they, they do this, right? And we're no different, um, and not just us, our, our competition here in Las Vegas, we all get along, we have some, some great guys here in Vegas that own cigar lounges and shops. The Strip is different. Mm -hmm. The Strip is really, it, it caters to the, the, you know, before COVID, 45 million visitors a year that come either for business or for, for, for pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the, the spots that you have on the strip, are, are, they're geared towards that, but they're awesome. They give, they give great experiences as well. 100%. Um, but if you're looking for what you have back home, just the Vegas version of it, our lounges, some of our competition that have lounges, those are, those are where you want to go. We have quite a lot to offer, I think. Um, and then as far as our, what's different about this location, uh, unique in, in Las Vegas, we have our 24-7 private members lounge, which is right next door. Um, that was really a no-brainer for me, having traveled and lived in other cities. I lived in Atlanta, I lived in Pittsburgh, uh, spent a lot of time across the world. Um, the private member lounge concept was, was something that I, I always loved when I'd go to, to cities. Um, I would I would be a guest in, in, in those lounges. Some of them had day passes where I get a 24 hour pass and so I could use their lounge and I'd sit there and work late into the night instead of going back to the hotel and, and mm -hmm. sitting in my room, right? I could, I could smoke a cigar at, in, in their establishment. And other times it was just simply the, the beautiful hospitality uh, of, of that cigar shop owner or whoever was working would welcome me into the private lounge, give me a place where I could enjoy a cigar, meet some of their members. And, and I learned that there's a, there's a real demand for that. Um, I remember being in Houston one time, and uh, Houston has Stogie's. Uh, Stogie's Cigars uh, is, is, is a fantastic lounge okay. uh, over there. They have two locations now, but their main location was where I was at the time. And at the time, they were kind of the same size as we are here. Now they're, they're about 10,000 square feet. They've, they've really grown over the years but this, I'm talking about over 10 years ago, they invited me into their private lounge after dinner, and I was sitting there just working. There was a couple guys sitting there smoking, and then there was a guy who was in the corner, he was asleep. 
<laughs> and he looked a mess, you know? And, and, and I remember saying to the owner, uh, Jorge, who, who had hosted me, what's the story with the vagrant sleeping in the corner of your private member's lounge? And mm -hmm. he smiled and he said, that guy is a writer. He writes movie screens and, 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 and movie scripts and, okay. and, 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 and produces movies and stuff like that. So he actually comes in here late at night when there isn't anybody and he works all night so he can get his work done. Oh wow. And then as soon as the sun comes up, he goes home and 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 comes back again the next night, you know, and I just thought to myself, yeah, if you're a cigar smoker and you're a writer and you wanna want a place to do that, where you know, where else can you go? Unless you're, you're doing it at your own place. That's the unless only Unless you're doing it at your own place. Yeah, which, that's the only again, place. You know, most people don't smoke in their own place, no. right? So, so the idea of of, of having that here in, 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 in Henderson, and I, I got to tell you, we're very focused. This store is very focused on being a neighborhood store. Mm -hmm. We really want to cater to everybody in the greater Henderson area um, because it's convenient for them to get here. We have a lot of guys that come from other parts of the city, and we love that. They're always welcome. They they know that this is their their place too. But at the end of the day, you know, we have late hours here. Why? Because guys will finish up dinner with their families and they come out here. Mm -hmm. They get here at 9 o'clock, 9.30. They want to be able to light up one or two cigars, watch whatever's on TV, have a smoke, just hang out. Um, and so we cater to that. That's that's really what, what we focused our efforts on. Our Sahara location, definitely it's busiest during the day, mm -hmm. um, less so at night. Uh, and again, that's a location thing. It's, not, it's more in a commercial area. It's not necessarily in a neighborhood. So, um, you know, that store caters to a lot of the guys during the day that want a place to come, have a cigar, they have a couple hours to kill, get an espresso. That's, that's kind of what happens sure. there, so. Yeah, I was, uh, I was very fond of the, the Sahara location when I had a lot of business on the Strip because it was super accessible right off the Strip there on Sahara. So I would always pop in there for a quick one and still do to this day whenever I find myself you know, kind of in that central area. This is obviously a little bit easier for where I live in town and also because of the fact that I graduated from Silverado High School. I grew up down on Silverado right. Ranch. So, I mean, these were, th this area is where I first went to a tobacconist, where I first went to a cigar shop, where essentially I went in there every single day and tried a different cigar every single day like you talked about and that was part of my journey, you know, into it. and. I mean, I've I've even fallen asleep in one of the lounges down the street before after yeah. having an LFD, yeah. <laughs> double the Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it was the DL660 that put me in one day, and uh, I took a little nap that day. So let me ask you, with your schedule, you know, you've got you've got your day job. Yes. You've got the podcast. Yep. Um, you've got a family. Yeah. When do you smoke cigars? Like, what's your cigar smoking schedule mm. look like? It is it is in constant evolution. Um, I, I wish that I could just point to one thing and say that that's, that's my daily or that's my weekly routine. Uh, it typically, so, so my wife is, uh, she's, she's Japanese and um, she is a professional bikini competitor, which means that the, okay. the diet regimen, the workout regimen is very, very strict in our household. We actually don't even really consume alcohol at home. And if we do, it's like one glass of wine every so often. She is so supportive of all of my hobbies, just as I am of hers, which is important in any marriage, right? In any relationship, just in general. She knows that uh, the one thing that I will never give up, besides her, of course, and our dogs and cats, is cigars. So um, she has always been very supportive. She loves the the aroma of cigars. She has smoked a cigar a few times with me, but it's just not her particular thing because she grew up uh, with a, a little bit of a cigarette smoking background. Right. So for her, it's very, very difficult to distinguish between the inhalation and right, right, right just the- A lot the, of people have a problem with that, right? A lot of people. Uh, so for her, she understands the, you know, the ritual and the the whole entire camaraderie about it and that I love to go out with my friends and just grab a cigar sometimes. It doesn't matter where we are, just as long as we get that cigar and, you know, we hang out and, and she's very, very uh, supportive of all of that. So typically when I am smoking, I, in the 
the months that are not 109 degrees. I'm usually smoking at home. And it's a combination of between my backyard and my, my garage or my, like in front of my cars really in the garage because the garage doubles as a gym for us since COVID. Okay. So we've got a full on gym in our garage and I try to do my very best of like making sure that I'm somewhat in front of all of the equipment so that I'm not permeating it with cigar smoke. Right, right. Uh, so the majority of the time it's in my backyard and then I obviously, uh, I get pulled onto the strip for a lot of various reasons for work with my, with my day job. So I, I try to go and support um, places that are accepting of cigar smoking. Does not matter if it's a bar, a, you know, a, a lounge or whatever. If they support cigar smoking, I support them as best as I can because right. I believe in that and I always have. Um, and then as far as with the local lounges, you know, I'm very, very fond of both your store, your partner's store, and, and I mean, they're both your, your stores. So I love Infuego. Love coming down here. As I said, I graduated high school down here. So this is honestly the easiest shop for me because I like to do a lot of my grocery shopping here once a week. And then I also have some of my high school friends that this is the closest thing because they've never, they, yeah. they haven't moved around town as much as I have. I've lived in every, every part of this city. So for me, uh, it, it's easy access, but I also get to meet up with all of them. And we yeah. get to share that experience here at least once every week or every other week. I try. Yeah, I've seen you in here a few times with, with your friends and that's, that's fantastic. Um, you know, the other thing that's interesting about Las Vegas, it's not so much like this in a lot of other cities. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of respect for the competition. Sure. You know, we, we, we all get along, we're good friends, we go to dinner, get together for the occasional cigar, been to each other's houses. Um, for the most part, everybody that's a cigar lounge gets along uh, here here in town and one of the things that, that I always feel is important to remember is you know I was a consumer a lot longer than I've been a cigar shop owner right <laughs> and as a consumer you you're free to go where you want to go like you spend your money where you want to spend it how you want to yeah. spend it I, I always uh, would get very frustrated when a cigar shop owner that was my regular frequented place would make a snark remark about you know what were you doing at this store, right? Well, sure. guess what? I was on the other side of town. I had a meeting. That was the location. Or you know what? I was in the mood for something different because one of the nice things about cigar shops and lounges is they're all different. Yeah. Even our two in Fuegos are very different. Mm -hmm. And if you are, in, you know, one day you're in the mood for one, and the next day you're in the mood for the other. That, that that's great. And we, I, I say that because I, I feel like. Some customers, and we've talked about this with other cigar shop owners, where it's like they get a little clicky like that, where it's like, no, I'm a, I'm an Enfuego guy, or I'm a this or that guy, right? Sure. And it's like, no, you, you're welcome here anytime, right? The fact that you spend the majority of your time at this particular lounge, and that's your home lounge, that's great. Yeah. That's convenient. It's where you live. It's closer to you. Whatever the history is, doesn't matter. What I love about cigar shops is you're always welcome to come into somebody else's store and have have a cigar. Yeah. Uh, I think any time that an owner jumps in and makes you uncomfortable, then that owner is, is doing a disservice, I think. I agree. Um, so yeah, strongly feel that way. And I myself, you'll catch me in some of my competition stores sometimes when I need to get away and just have a, a, an hour of catching up on something. And I, so I'm interrupted in my stores all the time. All the time. Yeah. You'll find me at another location. I spend 10 minutes saying hello to my competition, and then I spend the rest of that time relaxing. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. It's very healthy. No, I agree. I agree 100%. And it's good to get a uh, it's good to get a wide perspective too of everything that's involved in the city that you're you're gonna consume and purchase cigars in, especially in a in a city like ours where the tobacco tax is fairly high. I mean, we're in the top 10 percentile, I believe, out of all the states, right? Absolutely, yeah. Not just city, but state. Um, and it's just like, you know. Our, our state has, if I may interrupt you, yeah. our state has one added, what I believe is a problem and a disservice to the consumer, right? So we don't necessarily have the highest tax rate. It's in the top 10% for sure, but there's states that have much higher tax rate than us. Our state, there's two things that our state refuses, or does and, and then refuses to do on the one that other states have figured out, right? So one, in our state, 
when we bring cigars in, we have to pay the taxes up front. Mm -hmm. So if I bring in, let's say I bring in $10,000 worth of cigars this month, I have to pay the taxes on that right away. I gotta write a check. So, so I'm paying taxes before I've even had a chance to sell my product, mm -hmm. right? That puts an incredible strain on a business. Mm -hmm. From a cash flow perspective, from, from an inventory, from being able to provide a variety to my customers. And you know, we're in a business where there's variety. Yeah. There's, you know, uh, people ask me, you know, more boutiques, more this, more that, more sizes. Well, one of the problems with that is every time I'm bringing something in, I have to pay my tax up front, and it's a significant tax, right? So the state doesn't seem to understand or care about that. And then the second problem I see is cigars, premium cigars, are a very unique category inside of tobacco. Right, when you take all tobacco products, the majority of tobacco products are small dollar numbers, right? So when you're hitting a pack of cigarettes or a vape or you know any of the other, you know, uh, snooze. The stuff the snooze, the stuff that you buy at the gas stations, yeah. When you're hitting them for the, the tobacco tax, that dollar amount is very small. Okay. When you take a twenty dollar cigar and now you gotta add the mm -hmm. tobacco tax. Mm -hmm. It's a big number. Yeah. So what a lot of other states have figured out, and these and some of these very very heavy tax states like New York, uh, you know, New York, uh, Ohio, they figured this out is keep the tax rate where it is, 30, 40, 50 percent, whatever that tax rate is. But when you cap it across everything, you, if you cap it at say see. like Arizona caps it at 50 cents. Right? If it's capped at 50 cents. It doesn't matter if it's a $7 pack of cigarettes or if it's a $25 exactly. cigar. You collect your full 50 cents. percentage or whatever it is on, on the other tobacco products because they don't ever reach 50 cents. Right. But now on a Padron or, you know, a, a, a Cohiba, an Opus X. An Opus X, where you would be at several dollars. Mm -hmm. You can, if you cap that at 50 cents, well, guess what, what happens? Here's what happens. One, you end up with increased sales across the board because now people don't have to go online and order those cigars online where they're circumventing the sales tax uh, the, the, and the tobacco tax. The state tax. Both sales and tobacco. and tobacco tax. They're circumventing that. Yeah. Even though the state says, well, that's not legal, they have to pay. You know what? You don't enforce that. Nobody does. Right. Nobody does. So. Everybody I know buys online, doesn't pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. So the state's losing on both sales tax and tobacco tax when they encourage people to go online because they're too expensive locally. Secondly, you're hurting small business mm -hmm. like us. You're, you're, you're preventing us from growing. You're preventing us from doing more so we can pay you more taxes. Yeah. Right? And if, if, if you actually capped the tax, what would happen is every one of my customers here would buy more. And if they're buying more, you're collecting more sales tax, mm -hmm. right? As well as more tobacco tax. And then you buy more tobacco, everybody Absolutely. wins. Everybody wins. And, and that's something um, the state of Nevada is, is, is not willing to engage and, and look at. And, and, and specifically the tax office in the state of Nevada refuses to engage in that conversation. And that to me is criminal. I, I think it's, it's a shame. It, it, it's not the right way to run anything. Is there a, has there been a petition? I know that Cigar Rights of America focuses very hard on establishing representation for businesses all across the country. Um, but is there anything in the works or as far as even a local Nevada thing, being that this is a Nevada show and you know, as much as YouTube is worldwide, uh, you know, is there anything in the works as far as local petitions or anything like that that's, uh, you know, on the horizon that people should look out for if they do want to support the changing of these or, or at least lending a hand and, and a voice? Uh, at the moment, there, there, there isn't anything. Um, I can tell you that several of us, um, you know, Dion, Dion owns a... a, a, a Fumari, a we've talked about Fumari. it on the show. Great store up 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 in, in, in Reno and then just a short drive away from 
from Frey Ranch. If you're ever up in Reno, go to Flamari. We actually are, are, we really want to organize a trip to go up there and do exactly that, to, to visit both places. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and take five, five to ten of the customers up there to do that for it's a road It's a great trip. idea. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, Dion, ourselves, uh, Michael Fry here in, 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 in Las Vegas. He might we, make an appearance pretty soon on yeah, the show. Yeah, he'd, he'd be great. Michael's a good buddy. He's been in the business a very long, a lot longer than we have, and long just time. a great guy, too. Um, but we had we had gotten together um, during the last session of, of the the state congress, okay. And but we were a little bit late to the game. But we'd looked at what we could do to lobby the governor and the assembly to look at this. Um, we were, like I said, we were a little bit late to the game. Mm -hmm. um, it costs a lot of money to do that. Um, we were willing to do it. Um, and I think it would benefit everybody in the game if we did uh, pass these. We're not even asking for a change of, of anything, but just uh, adding a cap. So add a cap to what's already there. So you don't have to change or rewrite the laws, but if you add a cap, like again, state of Arizona, state of Ohio, New York, they've all done this and they've seen their, their businesses go up. They've seen the collection of taxes go up, the amount of taxes that they've collected. Mm -hmm drastically goes up and the consumer benefits right so uh, we, we we've we may be bringing that back we may not I mean at the end of the day let me let me kind of explain it in, in, in layman's terms when we get hit with taxes you get hit with taxes mm -hmm. you the consumer gets hit with taxes right? right so I always say to people you know it matters how you vote it matters <laughs> who you vote for right that's really the only recourse you have is Get yourself educated. Don't be ignorant in life. Get yourself educated. If, if, if the price of cigars are important to you, and they may not be, but if they are, get educated and vote that way. I know many people that are one issue voters, be it Second Amendment, be it, be it you know, whatever, so yeah. taxes. Sure. Uh, they get themselves educated on who they vote for. I think this is no different. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, at Master Your Ash on Instagram. Look out for our newsletter. You can drop us a line, leave us an email, and we'll sign you up for that. It comes out every single month with more information on Master Your Glass, Master Your Ash, all the wonderful segments that we're adding in. Please feel free to, once again, like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Michael Prisdell. Thank you very much.